I need you to put the customer on the phone, and I'm going to explain things to them. So put the customer on the phone, please. If somebody wants to speak to you. I don't know who, who is. Right before you can understand. If I'm a, if Hello? So Hello, this is Paul from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. Uh? And I need you to... Uh, we're having a problem with that guy. He doesn't understand English. And basically, okay. was what we're trying to do is we're trying to fire him. So could you let him know that uh, we appreciate his service, but uh, he needs to go home now. Who? This is Paul from the corporate office. The man that uh, just handed you the phone, he's fired. Can you tell him he's fired <laughs> while we listen on the phone? He said to tell you that you're fired, you need to go home. This is Paul from the corporate office. He said to tell you that he just cannot leave the store. No, it, it's it's an order. He has to. It's an, it's an order from the corporate office that you leave the store. And he needs to take all the money in the register and give it to you. We will be calling the authorities. And if he, he if, needs, no, no, wait, no, wait a minute. If he, he doesn't give you the, the, if he doesn't give you the money, I'm not. Listen, I'm not an employee here. I'm a customer. We realize that, dummy. You need to threaten him with a kickflip. <laughs> Who is this? How dare you get on the it's phone? Paul. I'm Paul from the corporate office, ma'am. Did he go home yet? Ma'am, did he go home? Um, no. Tell him to go home. Who is he working with? Treat, treat, treat him like a dog. Be like, go home. And point at him. Point and, at him. And you, and you think he's going to give me the money in the drawer? No, that's ridiculous. Yes. Ma'am, tell him. Ma'am, we need you to pick a newspaper, roll it up, and hit him in the head with it. <laughs> Just bang him on the nose. Make sure he gives you all the money first. And, and then and then go like be like, no, no. My phone kept ringing, so I picked up. It's Roy saying he's the one who dinged my truck. He would be me radio waves and we echo cups. Scratch a gas tank cap, left his CD in the trunk. I said, this seems fine, I don't even see a scratch. And suddenly he says, well you park like an ass. Now I'm feeling appalled, can't believe what he said. I'm so flustered by this call, my face is turning red. Then he says, he's just playing the only call to distract us. Man, the temerity of this son. Son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's a son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's a son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's a son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's a son of a cactus. It's a so day at work. I'm feeling pretty poor. It's when I get a call and it's Steve Dave from corporate. Hey Steve Dave, what can I do? Yeah, we're having some problems. I need a favor from you. Maybe I can pull some orders if you give me a phone number or two. Yep. Yep. Sure, here's some numbers. Anything else you need? Does a phone survey and someone kicks me in the knees? A few minutes later, I got people calling back to this saying, What the hell are you guys doing filling my engine with acid? Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Now this is a story that might sound weird. Hey everyone, you are listening to the Snowplow Show. This is episode 465 for May 16th, 2018. And today's show is sponsored by Serial Shitter, Miguel F., Jessical, St. Pepe, and Curaz. Thank you, five sponsors, for supporting today's show. As mentioned in the last show, I guess I'm just going to have to double up on the sponsors, or I mean more than doubling up, I guess. I don't know what else to do because I can't keep up. I asked on the last show what you guys thought. I don't think a single person responded to that, so I'm just going to assume everyone's completely fine with it. Nobody gets to be a sponsor of a single show anymore. Maybe I'll keep it the same on the hobo sods or something i don't know what to do but also thank you to the new supporters of the show like mads barlos mortified donuts nico paul m casper k rusty balls brandon m jake a and martin f thank you guys for signing up for the patreon those people are not to be confused with the sponsors of today's show don't give them that much credit also thank you cody no name who did that song on today's intro that i played it's called son of a cactus and he sent that to me a month and a half ago, and I just completely missed it in my email because that's when all of the Kickstarter stuff was starting to happen. It just kind of got buried. I've been trying to catch up on my emails lately since the Kickstarter stuff is winding down, but sorry about that, Cody No Name. 
That's an excellent song. I wish I would have played that a month and a half ago. I bet you there's other stuff like that in my email that I haven't gotten to. If, if I've ignored something that you've sent in, please be patient. I will get to it eventually. I'm just running a little bit behind right now. I have a few announcements today that have nothing to do with coins. Isn't that amazing? However, first I'm going to talk about coins. Mainly just to say that, um, number one, I've mailed out all of the PLA coins and Snowplow Show coins to um, everyone that's in the United States. Like, all of your coins have been mailed out. I mailed out the last batch of domestic stuff, I think, on Monday. So if you haven't got it yet, you will get it, hopefully, within the next couple of days. I've also been mailing out a bunch of international stuff this week, but there's still quite a bit of it left to go. And by international, I mean both Canadian and everywhere else that's not in the United States. I mailed out, like, five things today. I mailed out, I think, I don't know, three or four things yesterday. I'm going to do some more tomorrow. So here's the problem with internationals, and I'm very sorry, international people, that it's taking forever. I'm trying to do all of the Kickstarter international supporters first. So Kickstarter supporters that are outside of the U.S., I'm sorry. I'm doing my best. I'm trying to get all of those sent as soon as I possibly can. But the main problem is that it's really expensive to mail international now. Like, worse than last year. Well, no, I think it's the same as last year, but I wasn't mailing thick packages last year. Every international thing I mail out, though, it's like $10 for Canada, and it can be up to $23 for international people. And I was not expecting that when I set up the Kickstarter. I did not calculate that into the shipping prices that international Kickstarter supporters had to pay. I'm not asking anyone to send any extra money. Please don't do that. I know some people are going to offer to do that. You don't have to do that. It's fine. I'll get it eventually. It's just taking longer than I expected. And I blame everybody who supported the Kickstarter because the Kickstarter did awesome. I was expecting, you know, maybe $2,000 tops and it made $4,100 and that made me feel like I had to put extra stuff in there and extra stuff led to crazy shipping prices, especially international, some of it domestic too, because last year I only paid 91 cents to send stuff domestically, and this year it was $3.50 because of those lapel pins made everything too thick. And then the same with international, I think like 6 to $8 last year, and now it's 14 to 23 Fuck! I'm not trying to complain, I'm just trying to explain why it's taking me forever to send all the international stuff out. It is possible that I won't be able to get the international stuff sent out for two more weeks because I am running out of money. I don't have the money to send out the internationals. I will have the money on the first when I get some more money from, you know, Patreon and everything else. I've got everything packaged up and all the envelopes are addressed and everything and people are still buying coins, so that's a good thing. Before my problem was I was out of coins. I'm almost out of coins still, so get them while you can, phonelosers.org slash coins. But every time someone buys a coin, that allows me to send out a few more packages, international packages, which is nice. So if you want to buy a PLA coin, please do that, phonelosers.org slash coins. That will allow me to get all this international stuff out before the first. I'd really like to get it all out this week, but I would say I've gotten less than half of the international packages mailed out, which sucks. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm working on it. If I do a Kickstarter next year, I'm going to be so much more prepared. I am not going to offer lapel pins because those just made all the envelopes too thick. What was I thinking? Okay, enough coin stuff. I have a couple of announcements. Announcement number one is that Carlito is holding a meetup in New York City. I don't think he said exactly where yet, but basically this Saturday, May 19th, from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, somewhere in New York, New York, I'm sure he's going to announce it before Saturday, but he's doing some sort of a meetup. I don't know who's supposed to be there, but he's wanting listeners of the Madhouse live show and my show and just everyone else to show up and say hello. I would go if it wasn't 4,000 miles away. So if you're in the New York area, please go see Carlito. Say hello from me. Give him a hug from Brad. Give him multiple hugs from Brad. Make them long and uncomfortable, please. Those are the best kind of hugs. I'm putting a link to the Facebook event in the show notes on snowplowshow.com, so be sure to go there, click on the event, and go see Carlito. Announcement number two is that I'm doing a Facebook event, which I will also link to in the show notes, this Thursday, which is tomorrow, the 17th, at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. I'm going to be on the Cave Crew radio show. That's a show that I've been listening to a lot this past year. They are all apparently big fans of PLA and excited to have me on. If you have not heard... Thursday, May 17th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. 
the one and only Brad Carter from Phone Losers of America and the Snowplow Show. That's right. He's going to be live in studio with us. Hell yeah. And we're very excited about that. We're going to have a great time. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, whatever. There is an event that you can You say so, DK. And I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if we're going to do live prank calls. I know we're going to talk about prank net for a little bit. And we're going to talk about the phone losers and the snowplow show and stuff like that. That's what I gather so far from what the host DK has told me. So everybody should be listening to that tomorrow. They broadcast on Facebook. I think they also broadcast on a shoutcast, maybe. I don't know. I always listen to them through my podcast app. I've only caught a couple of their shows live, but I guess I have to show up for this one. So if you are interested in hearing about 90 minutes of me on the Cave Crew radio show, there is a link in the show notes on where you can listen. So those are the two important announcements on today's show. Cave Crew radio tomorrow and Carlito on Saturday. And if you miss the live show tomorrow of Cave Crew radio, then you should look up Cave Crew radio on your podcast app. Because I know everybody listens to this show with a podcast app. They're not listening on YouTube, because that would be stupid. No, they're listening through a podcast app on their phone. So they're not stuck watching a slideshow for an hour. They can do other things on their phones besides watch YouTube while they listen to this show. So yeah, look up Cave Crew Radio on your podcast app. Be sure to listen to Thursday's show if you miss the live show tomorrow. Otherwise, why bother? You don't want to hear that twice. One last thing, and this is just a really quick thing. Congratulations, Dick of The Dick Show. I know he doesn't listen to this, but congratulations anyway. For the past six months or so, he's been dealing with a lawsuit by Maddox. You guys know Maddox, right? Maddox actually sued Dick for making fun of him on his show. It's a bunch of crazy drama that I've been following for the past year, but today the announcement came out that Maddox lost and Dick won. Dick won the lawsuit. Maddox does not get to sue him for $20 million for making fun of him on the internet. I know half my listeners don't care about this, but I'm excited about it. That just happened today. So woohoo, be excited. And if you haven't heard about this lawsuit thing, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. You should look it up on YouTube. There's quite a few videos out there explaining the entire thing. If you have a bunch of time to spare, it's kind of amusing to learn about. It's the Mickey Mouse talking phone. <laughs> Mickey, come over for a party. You call down death. Okay. With a Mickey Mouse talking phone, the battery is not included. It's Donald. Come on over. With a Mickey Mouse talking phone, you can call six different Disney characters. Yup, you guessed it. I'm Goofy. Hi, Goofy. Mickey Mouse talking phone from Hasbro's preschool division. I still have a list here of liquor stores with funny names that I Regret Jumping sent to me a couple months ago, I think. And I did that one live show, which was kind of fun. And then I think I tried using them again, maybe on a Sunday, but they were all closed because liquor stores close early on Sundays because, you know, Jesus, I guess. But I think it's early enough now that I could finish up this list finally, or at least get through some more of it because there's still a ton of businesses here with crazy liquor store names. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call some liquor stores. Valley Liquor. Hey, Bradley Liquors. Bradley Liquors. Hey, Bradley Liquors. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, great. Uh, it's Roy. I'm calling from the Trinity Baptist Church. Uh -huh. The Trinity Baptist Church. I'm calling. What do you want? To, what do you want? I'm calling to let you know that we're going to have our AA meetings there tonight at your store. Meeting in my store? Yeah, we're going to have an a, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous meeting in your store. Ah, okay. So we're going to need you to clear out a big space in the middle of the room. We're going to set up chairs. For what? For an AA. Meeting? Yeah, for a, a double A meeting. AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't know. Let me, let me put the, the Let me put the both. Okay. Hello? Hey there, this is Roy from the Trinity Baptist Church. Yes. And I was trying to explain to him that we are, um, are, are they're redoing our pipes. They're getting rid of all the lead pipes in our basement. So we're going to be having our AA meeting there tonight at your store. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, we definitely are. It's, uh, you guys are still on Main Street, right? 
Yeah, but this is a liquor store. How can you have a, uh, an AA meeting at a liquor store? It, it shows uh, restraint. You know, like if the alcoholics can hang out in there and, and not be tempted to buy any alcohol. And no. We'll, we'll be able to watch it. I didn't authorize it. Oh, no, it's, it's cool because, um, you know, we're with the church. We're with the Baptist church. I, I know, I understand. I'm a Christian also, but no. But, well, if you're a Christian, why won't you let the alcoholics come in there? And Because I'm... St- we're working. You can't have a meeting here. Well, no. no. We, we just want to, like, we just need you to clear out a big space in the middle of the store, and we'll, we'll just put chairs I down. I said no. It's just for two hours. I said no. Why not? Well, that's a big 10 no on that one. Hello, friendly package. Hey, friendly package liquors. What's up? Uh, we're, we're, um, I'm calling from the Trinity Baptist Church. This is Roy. Okay. I needed to let you know we're going to be having our Alcoholics Anonymous meeting there in your store tonight. Uh, we're going to be there around 6, and the meetings usually last about two hours. Okay. Um, do you have chairs there, or do we have to bring our own chairs? We do not. Okay, we'll bring our own chairs. There's about 20 of us. Okay. And can you clear a space out in the middle of the store? Like move some shelves, maybe? That would definitely not be possible. Oh, okay. Well, we'll get. We'll have our people do it. Okay. It's cool. We're we're good at it, and we will move them back before we leave. I don't think you're going to be able to move them at all. Oh no, we can do it. Like we may have to take all of the bottles off the shelf and just set them on the floor, and then move it. You know, because they're pretty heavy shelves with the bottles on them. And you cleared this with the manager? Um. Well, no. We just uh, we go to a different liquor store every week for the meetings. I don't think that's gonna work. No, it's okay. Like we used to have them here in the basement of the church, and the um, the fire department said it was a uh, fire violation, fire codes. We we couldn't have that many people in the church at once. So, so I don't think we're going to even have room on the floor for that kind of crowd anyway. Well, you know, we'll 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 set up our chairs around the shelves if we have to. We'll we'll make it work. It's like we we always make it work. It'll it'll be fine. You'd have to call the manager and make sure it's a, okay. Nah, it's cool. Well, then I'm going to have to say it's not cool. That's not going to happen. No, like we're, we've already set it up. Everyone knows to come there. There's just there's 20 of us. We can't reschedule at this point. It's too late. And you cleared it with the manager beforehand. No, I already told you I did not do that. But we're going to be there at 6. I'm not going to allow it. Man, there's nothing I can do. If you didn't clear it with the manager, I can't just have 20 people sitting in the middle of the, the store. Well, it's just for two hours. It's not like we're loitering. It's it's a meeting. It's an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. All right. You give me your number, and I'll have my manager call you. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not asking permission. I'm just saying we're going to be there, and we're going to have our meeting. So you're just going to show up and sit in here? Yeah, that's what we do. That, it's well, like, then it's we won't a- have to call the police because that's trespassing. Well, no, it's not trespassing. We're going to buy something. Yeah, it's, it's loitering. No, we're going to buy something when we're, when we're finished. No. We're going to buy non-alcoholic things. Thank you for calling Booty Liquors. Aww. Our hours are Sunday through Thursday from 11... Why are they not picking up then? Damn it, Booty Liquors. Who's liquor? This is Keith. How can I help you? Hey, Keith. Uh, this is Steve Dave from the Comptroller's office here in Gulfport. Okay. And I needed to let you know that we're going to be requiring that you change your business name. Uh, what? But you're going to have to change your business name because Pooh's Liquor is kind of obscene. Hold on one second, sir. Hold on one second. All right. Hold on one second. All right. There's a guy on the phone. Uh, he's saying that he's going to he's require you guys to change your business name. Hello, this is Michael. How can I help you? Hey, Michael. Uh, this is Steve Dave from the Comptroller's office here in Gulfport. I'm sorry, from who? From from the, the city here in Gulfport. Okay. And we just needed to let you know that we're going to um, be requiring you to change your, your business name to something else that's less offensive. Because we can't have, uh, okay. you know, signs up that look obscene and everything. Okay. Is this the building or is this the city? That's the city. Uh, really? It's been that way for... 
I mean, 25 years. I know. I think the people before didn't get the joke, or maybe they thought you had some kind of well, a deal it's, with... It's Winnie the Pooh. Well, do, is, do you, are you um, authorized to use their trademarked name? Well, but that's, that's, no, but it's not, we're See? not trademark See? infringing by just saying poo. One way or the other, way. You're, you're breaking laws, you're like obscenity really? laws or okay. trademark laws. I'm sure you can come okay. up with something that's not offensive, right? Uh, sure, and, and, and you are, are you going to send me some kind of notice or something? Oh, or yeah, of I, course. I, I taking just, the word of somebody on the telephone. Oh, no, of course not. I wouldn't expect you to do that. We're going to send out a, an official letter and everything. But okay. we just wanted you to get prepared, get get well. I, get to I work will let the, my brother know with the new sign and maker. We, okay, I'll I'll let him know. But, well, it's not just signs. There's a lot more involved in it than that. Yeah, we're mainly worried um, about the it, sign because you know I kids mean, are we're, out there. We're, we're talking about tax purposes. We're talking about doing business under Pooh's Liquor LLC. Yeah, I mean it's, can, can it's you not, there's a lot more involved than just changing a sign. Can you not use that offensive term with me on the phone? Because it's kind of gross when you think about it, Pooh's Liquor. Like, whose idea was that anyway? Was it yours or your brother's? Uh, it, it was that way when my, my uh, parents bought it 25 years ago. Oh, so your parents are disgusting people who thought that was okay to just leave it. I see. Uh, I, I'm going to wait for the notice before I even take you seriously because you're getting offensive. Well, you're what? I'm not offensive because I'm saying your parents you are, are disgusting. Being, you are being offensive right now. Are your parents like into scat porn or something? Like they're talking about poo liquor? That's gross. What okay, kind of, what kind of, this, this is a prank call. No, I it's not a prank right call. Like, like what kind of people are I, your parents? Uh, if you work for the city, you are not. You are absolutely not going to speak to me this way. Oh, oh. You have a I, nice day, you sir. You know what? You, you have... <laughs> Whatever, says the guy in the building with the big sign that says Pooh's Liquor. He had his excuse all ready, too. Like, oh, it's Winnie the Pooh. We totally have permission to use Winnie the Pooh for our liquor store. What liquor? Hey, um, this is... I'm sorry, your phone cut off. Is this wood liquor? Okay, I'm calling from the comptroller's office here in Bonner Springs. Uh huh. And I'm calling to let you know we're going to need you to change your uh, the name of your business because it's kind of offensive and obscene. You want me to change my name of the business because it's obscene? Well, wood liquor. I mean, come on. What does it mean? Explain to me what wood it means. Liquor. Wood liquor. You know, it's wood liquor. It's wood gas station right next door. It's wood liquor up in. Eleven work. Maybe you should call the manager. I'm just yeah. a worker here that works here for the company. Yeah, that yeah. Your, your excuse—it it doesn't sound very realistic. We we know what you're going for there. Wood liquor, ha ha. Very funny. Hey, bye, man. Bye. <laughs> oh man, he got upset for for not even being the owner or manager or whatever. Let's try the liquor barn. Good afternoon, liquor barn. Hey, Liquor Barn, this is Steve Dave from the City of Niles. I'm in the Comptroller's Department. Yeah. And I'm calling to let you know we're going to be uh, requiring you to change your business name to something other. Okay. Well, hold on. Let me let me let you talk to somebody who, uh, who's going to handle that. Hold okay, on. all right. Bob, line one. Bob. <laughs> I think he just hung up on me. He doesn't know how to use the phone. Let me call him back. Hey, Harold. Uh, you called me Bob, and then you hung up on me. You said something about line one, and you just hung up on me. Hello? Uh, where are you calling to? I'm calling the liquor barn. Okay. Is this Bob? This is not Bob. What? No, it's not. Oh, okay, I, I need to speak to Bob, please. Ask him Which to pick one? up line one. The the owner guy? I'm calling from the city. Hold on. All right. This is Bob. Hey, Bob, this is Steve Day from the city of Niles. Okay. And you sound like the same person. I'm calling to um, let you know. Uh, you probably want to talk to Mike. I don't know. 
<laughs> what the fuck's going on? I think they're all drunk. Hello? Hello, is this Mike? Yeah, Mike stepped out. No, he stepped out. Okay, well anyway, I'm message? just calling to let you know you can pass along the message to whoever it is that needs to hear it. Uh, you're going to be required to change your business name. Okay. Because Liquor Barn is very offensive. And this is a Christian community and people are driving by and complaining and, you know, their kids see it. And kids these these days they know that a uh, barn is another word for vagina, so you can't just be calling yourself liquor barn. That's weird. It's not not appropriate, you know. That's all. Sorry, what? Is that what you want to uh, tell to wine buyer? I don't know. You're mumbling or something. I can't understand a word you you're saying. You said you want to talk about some wine. No, no, I didn't say that. I said I'm calling from the city of Niles. And we're going to uh -huh. be requiring you to change your name of your business. Really? From something else to something else other than uh, yeah. Liquor Barn. Yeah, we've been called Liquor Barn now for uh, 35 years. Yeah, that, 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 that makes it even worse that you would keep your uh, name like that for 35 years. Okay. okay. Like, what, what were you thinking? I mean, there, there's kids out there driving by, seeing your sign. It's called Liquor Barn. And every uh, kid that sees that is like, oh, ho, ho, tee hee, vagina. We we know we know That's what right. you're talking about. We're not idiots here at the city. Nineteenth hole. Hey, this is nineteenth hole liquor, right? Yes, sir. Okay, this is Steve Dave. I'm uh, from the Michigan City City Hall. And I'm sorry. Uh, th this is Steve Dave. I'm calling from the Comptroller's office with the city, with Michigan okay. City. And um, I was wondering, uh, could you explain to me uh, what the meaning of your business name is? Like, what, what's that mean exactly, 19th Hole Liquor? Well, we're surrounded by golf courses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the 19th Hole. But there's only 18. To follow the 18th Hole. Look, I I'll be blunt with you. We know what you're doing there. Like, very funny. Ha ha. You got us. We approved your business name years ago or whatever, but you can't just have a, a business called Whole Liquor. It's 19th Whole Liquor, and I'm not real sure why you're getting snippy with me. I don't own the place. Okay, well, uh, you know, I, you're, you're going to have to change the name. Who, whoever the owner is there, we're going to send out a notice soon, and maybe you could just let them know in advance. But you can't just, like, like are you not a Christian this, lady? This has been in operation for over 20 years under the name that it was given it over 20-some years ago. And that makes it even more disgusting and more wrong, that you would keep that kind more of a business disgusting. name. Yeah. What are you talking about? Because you, you're working in a business called Whole Liquor. Clearly you're not a Christian. It's not called Whole Liquor. It's called the 19th Whole Liquors. If you look at it, it's got golf-themed. Yeah, what is yeah. wrong with you? No, it's not me. It's the, the the entire department here. We had a vote on it, and we were pretty sure that you were just trying to be what? obscene. What? I'm sorry. I did, it's the entire what? The entire we the entire department here, the comptroller's office and the zoning board and everything. You can't just have a sign out there that that talks about licking holes because you know there's, there's kids. There's anything about licking holes. It does too. It says whole liquor, and there's kids. <laughs> Whatever. Send your letter, dude. Kids walking by. <laughs> oh, man. I regret jumping. I think you may have been wrong about that one. And possibly about the, the, the barn liquors or liquor barn or whatever. But this next one, backdoor liquors, that's obscene for sure. This one is just ridiculous. Backdoor liquors, sir. Hi. Is this, I'm sorry, is this backdoor liquors? Yeah, back to a liquor store. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, th this is Steve Dave from the city, from Barhead. Okay. Hi. Yeah, I'm, hi. I'm in the comptroller's office. I needed to let you know that, um, well, first of all, can you explain to me, like, what's the meaning of the business name there? Like, why is it called back door liquors? There's two doors uh, to enter our building, and the back door is the door that everyone uses. I see. That sounded very prepared, as if, I don't know, when you first started working there, maybe they. You know, they're, they're like, if anybody asks, just tell them this. No. <laughs> I, I kind of figured it out as, as it goes, I guess. What, what do you mean? You figured what out? Well, like, they, they didn't, like, tell us that. That's just, that's why it's named that. Is there something I could help you with? <sighs> you poor woman. I don't think you realize. Backdoor liquors, that's, they're talking about licking butts or, or 
you know, looking at you, you know, and ask them out. Is there mouth anything that stuff. I can help you with? I'm calling to let you know we're going to probably be requiring you to uh, change your business name soon because it's obscene and you can't you can't just be running a business here in town called Backdoor Liquors. Can I just get you to hold on one second? Yeah, is somebody important there that, that you can transfer? Yeah, I'm sorry. I have a customer. Can you just hold on? Oh, so there's no. it's just you there? No, there's another man. Would okay. you like to speak to my manager? Yeah, the man. That would be good. Okay. Thank you. Back to liquor, sir. Oh, you didn't transfer me. You just hung up. Oh, sorry. Hold on one it's second. It's okay, honey. seems that Wayne is on the phone. Can I take a message and have him phone you back? Uh, just let him know that he's going to get a notice in the mail soon, and you're going to be changing your name to something more appropriate. And um, what's your name, sorry? Uh, this is Steve Dave. I'm from the Comptroller's office here in Barhead. Steve Dave? Yep. Do you have a phone number that he could contact you at? Uh, yep. 232. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, honey, baby. Sweet tits. She's really good at slamming that phone down. Good afternoon, Sturdix. This is Lindsay. Hey, Lindsay. This is Steve Dave from the um, Comptroller's office with the city here in Minneapolis. Okay. And um, I, I just need some information for our forms here. Um, can, can you explain to me the, the meaning of the, the name there, the business name? Sturdix Liquor Store? Yeah, yeah. Like, is there a, a story behind that, or is that somebody's last name? Yeah, the owner is Jim Sturdix, mm -hmm. and it's Sturdix apostrophe S, yes, Sturdix Liquor Store. I see. I don't know. It, like, we've been uh, having meetings here about your business name, and I'm pretty sure we're going to be asking you to change your business name soon because it's kind of obscene. Because you know, I'm it, not obviously, sure how you want, re want me to respond. The, the the business is it's been in business since 1934. So yeah, the family name, the last name. Everyone knows what it means. Basically, like we get complaints all the time about your business name be, being called basically Dick Liquors. Where and, are you calling from? Um, from the comptroller's office here with the city of Minneapolis. From where? The city of Minneapolis. Okay. All right. Well, and, you can send something in writing, but no, we the family will. Name. We're, we're definitely right, doing it, and and he's gonna have to change his last name too. She doesn't care. That's what I should do next. I should just call people with weird last names and insist that they change their names because they're obscene. Be like, yeah, this is Steve Dave over at the Walmart. We noticed you used your debit card, and it says Sir Dick on it. That's gross. What the hell? This is a Christian store. Keep your obscene shit at home. Main Liquor, can I help you? Hey, Main Liquor. I'm calling from the Trinity Baptist Church. Uh-huh. And guess what? We're going to have our our Alcoholics Anonymous meeting in your store tonight. Uh, what do you need? Uh, we're going to have a meeting in your store tonight. We're going to have 20 people show up. And we're uh -huh. going to have... A, it's going to be for Alcoholics Anonymous. AA. We're going to set up chairs all over your store, and we're going to tell sad stories about how alcohol ruined our lives. Yeah, but uh, what do you need? Okay, you, you had meeting tonight, but what do you need? Uh, we're going to have it at your store. We're going to have it there, where you are, on Main Street. We're yeah. We're going to come in there, and we're going to have a meeting for two hours. Yeah, call me in the store. Okay, we'll be there tonight. 20, 20 people. All right. Uh, one of them is going to be uh, just 18 years old. Is that okay? The 18 year old? Oh, no. Oh. That's the 21 and over. But, but liquor ruined this 18 year old's life. So, uh, the, yeah, you know, he, he's a part 21 of the meeting. Over. No, oh, no, but, but he's, he's a part of the meeting, so we have to let him in. But no. You don't no, have, no, no, 18. You don't have to check our IDs, do you? Like this, yeah, I check ID. So. Well, we're, the the eighteen year old's not going to buy any alcohol. We're just coming no. in to tell sad stories. No, the eighteen no no buy alcohol. Um, 
Well, you know, it, it's going to happen. There's going to be 20 people coming in tonight. You're not going to cart us all, right? Yeah, but that's only to have 21 and over. That's okay. He no, looks, no. He looks, this 18-year-old, he looks like he's 30. He looks very haggard. Like he's, uh, uh, no, you know, alcohol no. ruined his life, so it, he looks very old. No. It's cool. All right, sir. Yep, but we're going to have a meeting there tonight. We're all going to be there. 20 or okay. th 30 of us. Have a good, have a good day, sir. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Did he just call me Loco? Right, Lickers, I can help you. Hey there, uh, this is Steve Dave. I'm with the city of Harrington. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I, I was needing to find out, I, I need to write this down on our forms here. Um, like, what does brittle bit mean? Like, what's, what's the meaning of that title? Is that someone's last name, supposedly? Well, I'm thinking um, that brittle bit is like, you know, for the horse racing, like brittle for the, like, the horse. Hmm. I think that's what what he means. And then bit. What what does bit mean? A uh, 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 brittle bit isn't like the thing for the horses. That's what it's called, I think. Are you sure it's not like some some like euphemism or double entendre or something like something sexual? No, no, I don't think involving <laughs> horses maybe because like the the city they're they're tr they're voting right now to um, force you guys to change your names. Because, uh, you know, it's offensive to have that on a sign out by the road. Yeah. So it huh. could happen. Like, are you sure? Are you sure you're not lying about the horse thing? Well, this is not my store. This is, the, uh, I'm, I'm just an employee here. Yeah, I know. Um, but they probably trained you to, to lie about the business name in case no, anybody asked. No, he did not train me to lie about the name. Um, I was always told that that's what it was for. Uh, if it has a double meaning to it, I I'm not sure, sir. Okay. Um, hey, I was inside your store like maybe an hour ago. Um, I mm -hmm. was I was the one wearing a hat. Okay. Like an old timey hat, and um, I was inside the cooler in the back, you know, mm -hmm. taking pictures. Okay. And I left my camera in the in the cooler. Can you see if it's still in there? Sure. Okay. Just give me one second. Hmm? No, no, no. He wanted me to. Go. You know, because I'm a spy. I was wearing a suit and a hat. Had my camera. I should tell him it's one of those old cameras from the 50s. With the big flash on it. Hello? Hello. Yes, I, um, like, uh, do you know more or less, like, around where you think you might have left it? Because I just, I was just in the cooler and I didn't see it. Ah, shit. I wonder if someone stole it. Uh, you, you say it was through the front cooler, like, where my 30 packs are at, or in the other side of the cooler? I, I was in the part that the customers aren't supposed to be in. The part of the customer I'm not supposed to be in. Yeah, okay. I, I snuck in. I was okay, in the back room, okay. too. I, I was taking pictures in the back room. Maybe I left it in the back room. Back room meaning? Yeah, like in the back, you know, beyond the, the door that people don't normally go into. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we'll check that next. Okay. Uh, Double-checking now. Um, hmm. Okay, so let me go check the back room. You think someone stole it? Ah, uh, that I wouldn't be able to tell. I'm not sure, sir. There's no cameras in the coolers. Um, but I'm going to the back. And you say you came to the back and... I'm walking to the back now. I mean, it would have had to have been an employee, right? Are you sure you didn't take it? The who didn't take it? You. Why would I take it? I don't know. Like, maybe you wanted a, a cool camera from the 1950s. <laughs> nah, I don't need a camera. Just check. I mean, you're more than welcome to come back and walk around and again if you see it, but I, I do not see it. Oh, shit. You know what? It's right here. It's, it's like right here on my desk. I just forgot where I said it. It's right here. It's here. Don't worry about it. It's here. Okay, so I'm not a thief no more. I suppose. Well, I don't know if you're a thief normally. Like, uh, I'm. But I don't know. But you, you just call me a thief, basically. 
Well, I just said you could have stole it. Like maybe you just no. You said I, I could take it because it's a nice camera, and I do not need to do that shit. It, is, uh, it, it is. works for my living. It's kind of a nice camera. But, but anyway, you have a good day, sir. You, know, you call when the boss is here. You know what? Lots of people work for a living, but they still steal from the register. Okay, he's gone. Big Valley. Hey, Big Valley Liquor. This is Steve Dave from the city, from with Sterling Heights. Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? Good. How about you? Not too bad. Um, I just needed to find out, um, what does Big Valley Liquor mean? It's for this form here that I'm filling out. Um, because, like, there's no valleys around here, really, so I'm kind of confused. It's a party store. It's a what? Party store? Yeah, but what is the meaning of the term Big Valley Liquor? <laughs> like, where's that? Uh, you guys call back in the morning tomorrow and talk to my boss, because he named it, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, he didn't tell you, or he didn't ask? I mean, it's got to mean something. What, what does it mean? No clue. Need a receipt? Yeah, I'd be in tomorrow to ask. Okay. Um, hey, do you, you, you guys have kind of a large parking lot there, right? And there, there's plenty yeah. of space where there's not usually a lot of cars parked? Yeah. W- would it be okay if we brought in a, a pile of tires um, just, just to burn? <laughs> well, shit, I ruined that one. I'm sitting here watching the Discord chat room, and I regret jumping actually is responsible for that one. He's saying that he has a tire fire in his backyard. I don't know why I did that. Let me try the next one. Chai liquor. Hey there. Um, is this chili liquor, or did you say child liquor? Chai Lai liquor. Chai Lai liquor. What's that mean? <laughs> That's our town, Chai Lai. We're in the town of Chai Lai, Rochester, uh, New York. I guess so. I mean, sounds like you're in the town of Rochester, New York. Can I help you? Uh, well, I'm calling from the comptroller's office here in Rochester. Okay. And I needed to let you know we're going to be bringing a uh, stack of tires and dropping them off in your parking lot tonight. Uh, into a liquor store parking lot? Yeah, yeah. They're just going to be there for a couple of days, and then they'll um, they'll be gone. I'm sorry. Say that again. They're just going to be there for a couple of days. They're only going to take up maybe four parking spots. Tops. No, guy. Okay. Uh, you're not trapping that off of my lot. I only have ten parking spots. I, I know. Why but do it's, I need tires in my lot? It probably only take three of them. They're going to set them on fire. We just need a place to burn them. You for real, man? Yeah, we we do this all the time. We just pick a random business. It's kind of like paying your taxes, but instead of paying taxes, you just you know loan out a couple parking spaces. And the tires basically <laughs> just melt, and they'll turn into the asphalt. Yeah, no, 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 no. You're not doing that in my it's, parking lot. It strengthens the asphalt, so basically yeah, you're welcome. No I, no, no, I got ten parking spots. I'm not giving any parking spots up. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, it'll probably it'll probably just not even take a day. It's just yeah, that's okay, pal. Because like, all set. after a day, it's just going to be like this little pile of goo, and people can park on top of it still, as long as it's no. not too hot. No, I just had my parking lot sealed. Don't 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 bring anything over here. I got my tractor. I'll push it right on the road. Oh, you right can't do up, that. We're with the city. Up. We're with the comptroller's office. Yeah. So don't don't send anything over here. No, we have to. Like it, you, like we do this with every business. You haven't seen other businesses doing this. No, I'm I'm not into doing anything like that with a fire and taking up parking spots. You're you're not into helping park. out, you know, with basic civic duties. No. <laughs> Because that's all this is. It's yeah, part I know. Of, oh. I have ten, listen, I got 10 parking spots. We're going on the weekend. Absolutely not. It's just, Absolutely. I, I just had my parking lot sealed. No, it's not going to be over the weekend. It's, they're go, they'll be Pick gone it. by Saturday. They'll be burned. Yeah, my busiest time starts, starts tomorrow so, and, and goes through Saturday. So just learn how to so. get people in and out of the store quicker. You know, be a better businessman. No, no, no. Send me something to email and let me learn about it. I've never heard any such thing. Oh, no. no I'm not I'm asking sorry. permission. We're going to drop off tires tonight. Oh, no. You have to ask permission. This is private property, pal. Oh, the, it Don't doesn't matter. Think. I'm with the I'll city. Call. We, we own this, all of I'm the, not in the city. I'm not in the city. We own all the private property. And and <laughs> you know what? Like yeah, I, You have a good night, Bob. I, I don't even... <laughs> I wanted to say something about him running a business called Child Liquor. That's what it sounded like he was saying. The way it's spelled looks like chili liquor. Hello? Hey, is this, oh. is this Mo Liquor? 
Yes. Hey, why why didn't you answer Mo Liquor? What's that? Why didn't you answer Mo Liquor? Yeah, I'm, I, yeah, this is Mo Liquor. Oh, okay, great. I'm calling from Trinity Baptist Church. Yep. Hey, um, there's a member of ours. We think he's gonna come in there and try to buy alcohol. His name's uh -huh. Dave. His name's Dave. What's that? His name is Dave. Don't serve him alcohol. He's a recovering alcoholic. Okay, but how do I find out? Uh, ask everyone what their name is. Just be like, hello, how are you? What's your name? What are you doing? What's you know, your name? Just, you said Dave? Yeah, Dave McDaverson. Just make small talk. And if Dave McDaverson tries to come in and buy alcohol, uh -huh. then say no sale. Just refuse. Okay, okay sure. But it will be much better if you can send me a photograph. You know, sometimes it, I, I may keep asking every customer so, you know, they, they feel embarrassed. If I, my people, what they do is they just send me a picture. So Good I just people. hang it at a place that nobody sees, and I, then I, I know the, who's, the, who's the person coming in, you know? Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Like, I wish I would have thought of that before, um, but it's too late. I think he's on the way over. Oh, no, Dave, Dave, right? Yeah, Dave McDaverson. Ask everybody their name. Even the uh, how, how does he look like? Uh, he, always wears, he always wears stripes. See, he wears stripe. Yeah, he likes to wear stripes. He's one of those, and uh, those what is people. his age like? His age? Yeah. Uh, he he's he's thirty five, but you know he, he's one of those guys. He, he could pass for twenty. He could pass for fifty. You just don't oh, know. God. Oh, skinny, skinny. Well, yeah, he's about average, I'd say. I don't know. Just ask every. Okay, just, and uh, is he white American or uh, Hispanic or what? Uh, he's very white. J just talk to everyone. Just make small talk with everyone. He's, Dave, Dave, right? Yeah, he's white, but he's got a tan. He's got, oh, he's got a tan. Dave, Dave, okay. Yeah. All right. yeah. Just I'll try my best, buddy. Oh, thank you so much. Just, just make Welcome. small talk with everyone. Ask everyone their name. Thank you. I sure just, will. And, and then say, no sale. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Hey, hey, I have a question. Yeah. If I give you um, a directory of everyone in our church, like uh -huh. all, all 200 members, um, could you, and it has pictures of them all in the directory, could you not sell any of them alcohol for any reason? No, that that I cannot. You see, I cannot put it. Now, this one, I can say, hey, you know, one odd is okay. Otherwise, there can be lots of legal problems to me because I cannot refuse to so many people. Yeah, one, but... I can say, oh, sir, I did not find him in, on his feet well and all that. But if I say 15 people, then, then I will have more problems than I would like to have. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Like, uh, but we'll make everyone in the church sign a paper that says they're not allowed to buy alcohol anywhere. Uh -huh. So it's okay. Okay. So yeah, th then we can give you that directory, and you can refuse sales to everybody. Yeah, but you know, see, see from practical point of view, how will I know? This means I have to you know, match everybody's photograph, thing like this. So it's it's, pra it's not practical. Yeah, just look so through one the one odd person. Yes, I will help. I'll, I'll I, I'm myself a teetotaler. I'll do my best to help you on an individual oh, case. Thank you. But not on a blanket sanction, you know. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Just keep an eye out for Dave McDaverson, please. Okay, I sure will. Thank you, my friend. Please. Hey, thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs> wow, that was really nice of him. He's actually going to do it, I, and like I guess that's a normal thing to happen for people to call up and say, "Don't sell so and so alcohol." He's all accommodating and stuff. That's awesome. But one of I regret jumping's ideas in here is actually um, call from the Trinity Baptist Church, see if you can send them a member directory, and nobody's allowed to buy alcohol. Let's try that one. I don't think I tried that one on the last show. Rocket Liquors. Hey there, uh, this is Steve Dave. I'm from the Trinity Baptist Church. How you doing? Pretty good. Um, I needed to find out if I can just leave one of our member directories there with you, and if anyone from our church tries to buy alcohol, can you refuse it to them? Oh God, I couldn't do that. Because they're Christians. No, the directory has pictures, so you could you could get to know all their faces. Uh, are you saying alcohol is now illegal, sir? Oh, no, no, just, but they're Christians, and they should Then shouldn't. how could I do that, legally? Well, it's not a legal thing, like, they, oh, they yes, know. Oh, yes, it is illegal for me not to serve anyone that's not intoxicated. Well, some of these church members are underage, so you wouldn't be able to sell them alcohol. Well, there you go. Then I'll look at their license, and I'll determine that. Yeah, but, no, I just wanted to bring a church directory, and so you can't look, because we found out, like, two of our members have been coming in there and buying alcohol, and we can't have that. Why is that? Because it's alcohol. It's against the, the, the laws of religion. How's that for a oh, law? Oh, come now. No, I'm serious. I'm Greek Orthodox. I'm and, uh, pretty sure the Bible trumps your stupid... As far as I know, stupid... we don't see it that way. 
yeah, but we do, and, and this, these are our members, and you shouldn't be selling them alcohol. And I just want to bring a directory, and that's all I ask. We, we only have. And like, I, I will say no, sir. We only have I, 300 members here. I think here. you're being totally ridiculously unreasonable. No, when they join the church, when they become a member, we make them sign a paper that says they, they won't drink. Okay, then I think that's your problem, sir, not mine. Well, you're the one selling alcohol. I have a alcohol. license to sell alcohol to people that are not intoxicated who are over 21 years old. Well, you're being kind of a, a major dick about it, because, like... Oh, so you're a fucking asshole religious fuck, huh? Don't, don't, Why don't you come up here, bring your book, and I'll shove it up your ass. What book? My, the directory book or the Bible? Your directory book. Okay. Cause I you, believe in the Bible. I don't believe in re religious well, didn't sound like you do. like you. It doesn't sound like you believe in the Bible. You're calling me an asshole and stuff. You called me a dick. Because you're being a dick. I'm just asking yeah, I'll show you how much of a dick I can read this boy. Why don't you come up here and see me? It's like a simple request. I just And to... I said no. It's a pretty simple answer. Which letter don't you know? But you said no like an asshole. Like you didn't say it Fuck nicely. Fuck you, pal. Why would you say that to me? You're, you're being kind of a dick. I'm being a real dick. Yeah, you are. People like Glad you I'm... give religion a bad name, pal. I'll tell you that right now. I, I'm the assistant pastor here, and like th this is just like the rules well, of the church. Well, that's your church's problem, not mine, isn't it? I bet your church is a piece of shit. Wow. I'll be calling your pastor to tell him all these things you've said to me, okay? Oh, I'll tell him you're lying. I'll Turning tell him... the other cheek, huh, freak? They're not going to believe what you. What kind of an assistant pastor are you? They're not going to believe you because you work in a liquor store. They'll be like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, I see. He's liquor known, bad. Known liar. Okay. That's why Jesus turned the water into wine, huh? Oh, that, that's like bullshit. You know, that's not even true. Like, you're, oh, you're misinterpreting okay, the Bible. Okay. So you're, you're the one that determines what scripture is true and what scripture isn't well, true. No, God, just, you must be... Are you the second coming of God or the third coming, or are you just an asshole? You never know. I, could I would love to meet you. I know you're not, though. You're just like some gross no, person. No, I'm the that... guy that would shove your little book of regulations for your little fucking ridiculous church up your ass. No, it's, just a, who I it's am. just a member directory. It just has the I'm pictures. here all the time. Bring your member directory and any members you want, and I'll shove one up each of your asses. Well, that's gross. Why would you do I'm that? I'm done that's, with you, fuckhead. That's, fuck that's illegal. You're talking about laws. That's illegal to shove things up, up, up people's asses just because you don't like wow, them. You're a real strange dude. <laughs> I think that's a new insult. I've never been called a real strange dude. Not over the phone, anyway. I think that call is a good one to end on, especially since the rest of these are not picking up. There's a few more left, but fuck it. It's gone on long enough. I got yelled at really good for being too religious. What more could I ask for? So that's the end. Thank you once again, I Regret Jumping, for your painfully put-together liquor store list. Hey, yo, Brad. It's your favorite frog. Hey, St. Um, Pepe. I was just listening to this episode from July 15th, 2016. I bet you 2016. were. 2016. You know what I mean. Way back in the fucking day. Yeah. Anyway. Back when the show was still good. I wanted to call out Olga for this joke. She says, uh, she says, why did the phone get fired? And the punchline is for calling in. It doesn't really make any fucking sense. It, like, shouldn't, shouldn't the punchline be for calling out? Like the phone called out? Or should it be for calling off? I don't fucking know. I, I don't I, know. Like, I seriously, I, I would like for Olga to fix the punchline. What's wrong shit. with it? It Good works. Taste. It's like one of those lame jokes from an 80s joke book or something. I don't have any beef okay. or anything. I'm not trying to start shit. Yeah, you are. I just. It, that, no, nobody makes fun of Olga's jokes. Punchline didn't sit well for me. with me. So, if that could get fixed, that'd be good. Thank okay. you. You heard him, Olga. He wants to fight with you. Hey, Brad, it's Nico. Hey. I was calling today because I think it's absolutely hilarious, your reaction on the Patreon when you sign up. Uh, my credit card had expired, so I had to put my new one in. Don't tell anyone what it is because then they won't sign up because um, they won't find out. And you throw yeah. the table Happen. around. It's really Stop funny. Stop it. Um, Don't tell people. And that's about it for today. I just want to thanks for all your shows that you're doing and you're keep welcome. up the good work and I'm going to keep supporting you. All right. Talk to you later. Thanks, Bye. Nico, for supporting the show. That was nice of you. If only everybody would support the show just like Nico. Hey, Brad. It's Crazy Calvin. Hey, Crazy so, Calvin. So, uh, yeah, I'm not dead. I've just been really busy that's with us nice. school and work lately. I was super but concerned. I caught up with... Uh, all the episodes of the various uh, shows that you do now on the uh, 
phone of Losers of America tune-in page. And I've been listening to the Shoutcast stream on my phone a lot, too, lately. Been enjoying that. Yeah, so, uh, Cactus Cactus. Yay! Listening to lots of shows. Oh, that reminds me. I forgot to announce on the beginning of the show that there is a new episode of the call-in show thing that I'm trying to do. You know, I did an episode with Giad a couple of weeks ago, and this week, me and Jag TV got together, did a show, took some calls. It was good times, and you can listen to that episode. It's up on the Phone Losers page, or it's on the Phone Losers Facebook page. The video version of it is. I will put a link to that in the show notes. Hey, Brad. This is our great jumping, and, you know, I just mm-hmm. think that I, I deserve more credit. Than it's weird me. how I regret jumping sounds yeah, kind of like Cody No Name. Damn idea. So uh, if you could just like have me sponsor every single episode and give me credit for every idea and every okay. list, that'd be great. All Man. right, dang. Remember the good old days when Cody No Name would send songs in, intro songs, and I would play them on the show. And now look at him. He's just trying to call in and cause problems, impersonate other people. I miss the old Cody No Name. Brad, 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 Brad. Hey, Brad. It's Cody, one half of the Cody brothers, but I ain't naming no names. Haha, <laughs> got that? Okay. Anyways, everybody's impersonating everyone today. Hey, thank I think. you for the coins. You're Love welcome. you, Brad. Must be nice to have gotten the coins already, unlike the international people who are just sitting around waiting, waiting for their coins to arrive, and they haven't even been shipped out yet. Sucks to be them. Good job rubbing it in their face like that. I have a technical question regarding your audio recordings. Okay. Uh, is it possible for you to isolate incoming audio from recipients? No. Uh, what I mean is just that when I know somebody you calls you or when you call them, the incoming audio can be recorded separately from your voice. Uh, is that technology possible? Because if it not. was... I thought not with my hobo set up here. It would be easier or maybe it would make it much, much harder for you to isolate audio drops that you do so hilariously um, at the end of some of your shows. Yeah, yeah. you know, I completely ruin some of those Roy Sipian things that they say because I'm always laughing over them or talking over them or whatever when they say such amazing things. I try not to do that. I try to just be quiet and let them speak. But sometimes it just happens. Uh, yeah, it kind sucks. of a boring question, but just just wondering. Also, um, Mr. Biggs is... The okay, local- wait. So, answer to that question. No, I cannot record things to separate tracks like a professional audio engineer probably would and just take things out of all the separate tracks on the show. He's talking about having a certain track for my voice, a certain track for like line one of the phone machines, another track for line two, another track for the background music, another track for the sound effects, you know, stuff like that. So later in the show, I could go through and just kind of change things around. And if I tried hard enough, I could probably make that happen, but it's just a pain in the ass because the way my phones are set up, like they do this weird loop thing through the mixer so that the phone callers can hear each other and they can hear me and just, you know, we can all hear each other. And if I tried to change that, it would probably fuck things up. And I think if I wanted to do multi-track recording, I would have to involve, like, maybe another computer into the mix and make things more complicated. And I just don't want things to be more complicated right now. I have a hard enough time getting two shows out every week as it is without having to deal with multiple tracks and everything. So, no, I cannot do that. Just just wondering. Also, um, Mr. Biggs is... The, the whole the whole podcast is absolutely brilliant. It I, is. I took, it took me two or three episodes to even get my head around whether he was joking or not. That's how great it is. Yep. Um, it's amazing. So thanks again, Brad. Talk to you later. Everyone should be listening to Mr. Biggs at AskMrBiggs.com. He's the guy that does drops for the Snowplow Show, like this one. Greetings, listener. I'm Mr. Biggs, and you've tuned in to the Snowplow Show on the Phone Losers of America Radio Network. Playing the best pranks of the 80s, 90s, and today. Yep, good old Mr. Biggs. <laughs> yeah. I love his show. I've been listening to him for, I think, eight years now, when he first started doing the Ask Mr. Biggs show, and then he quit doing a show forever, and then he just started up again recently, in the last year or two. And everybody should go listen to Mr. Biggs, AskMrBiggs.com, or on your podcast app machine on your phone, search for Ask Mr. Biggs with two Gs. It's a bizarre show, and you will love it. 
I'll put a link to that in the show notes if you want to listen to an episode or two. I cannot recommend his show enough. Everybody should be listening to that. Hey, Brad. It's I Regret Jumping. I just want to thank you for always using my hilarious ideas. Okay. I Regret Jumping. Come back to bed, honey baby. Well, I'm off to snuggle with Cody No Name now. Bye. Bye. All right, that's weird. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what you guys are trying to pull here. I don't appreciate it. Stop trying to confuse me. Oh my me. God, Brad, don't leave your house. There's a rapist in your damn yard. Oh no. You have to pee by the door and scream out very loud. Operation Dex and Slayer. Operation Dex and Slayer. I hate when this you happens. You scare him away. Please be careful. Be safe. All right, thanks. Probably nobody knows what you're talking about, but if you want some clarification, be sure to be listening to Cave Crew Radio tomorrow night, Thursday. May 17th at 6 p.m. Pacific, because I hear we're going to be talking about PrankNet on that show, possibly. Hey, Brad. Uh, thank you for the Kickstarter package. Appreciate it. Uh, I, in your, one of your most recent episodes, you asked if people would buy a record. I would buy a record. Okay, he's going to buy a record. Uh, yeah, that's I it. I couldn't understand the rest of what he was saying, but he's going to buy a record. If I make a record on the next Kickstarter, that's great. Hey, Brad, I have an idea for a prank, but, uh, well, if my idea is for, um, a car being note, okay. I want to leave it on this guy's car, but if I put it on his car and he calls into the car being request line, he's going to know it's a prank because of the whole Google subscription voice melting that happens when you call the number. What? So is there, like, another number I can have? What are you call? talking about? Like, right on the name. All right, so the number to leave carding notes on would be the prank line. Area code 508-784-6969. And I'm going to call that right now. We're going to hear what happens when you call into it. Maybe it's broken. Maybe it stopped doing the, the thing correctly. Hey, I'm not here right now, but at the sound of the tone, you know what to do. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should take that off. That is kind of obvious, isn't it? Is that what you're talking about? Because you were talking about Google scripting voicemail or something. What's the problem? All I know is the prank line number is 508-784-6969. That's the number you should use. If you think I should change that message around to something else, let me know. Maybe I'll do that soon. Uh, by the way, like he actually had his car like <laughs> ding. Like his window was knocked out. And, uh, oh, good. He could be funny. He'll blame me and call the police on me. That'll be great. Anyway. Thanks. Bye. Bye. You know, it's amazing the words I'm from corporate can do, what it can do. You're calling someone from the double tree asking for a phone number, and she's like, oh, I don't think I'm supposed to give that to you. Oh, no, I'm from corporate. Oh, all right, she just gives it to you. Yep. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's like a magic uh, word, isn't it? Right. Hi, Brad, it's Gloria. Hey, Gloria. Um, I just wanted to call and thank you for everything and being, like, a really good friend. Oh, and, welcome. And um, I wanted to also, like, let everyone know about my channel. I don't know if you mentioned it yet, but, um, like, if anyone doesn't know, Why I'm would I? having my own YouTube channel, doing my own calls. Maybe I'll be bringing back, like, the chicken throwing calls. We'll have to just, like, kind of wait and see. And yeah. Maybe I'll change my address and my Chicken throwing name, calls. Because I don't want to get caught on that. Live chickens. Um, but, uh, yeah, if, if you haven't told everyone, like, I kind of just want to let everyone know that, like, my YouTube channel is going to be uh, a name that Brad came up with, youtube.com slash telepond. Teleponed. Pwned. Pwned, I think pwned. it is. So it's P E L E P W N E D. Um, and Brad came up with that name, so <sighs> give him the credit. But I don't want the credit. I just to let everyone know that that's what my channel is going to be. Leave me Friday out of it. It's Friday. Um, and we'll be doing live. I'll be now doing someone's going to steal your YouTube name that you just told everyone. Live stream stuff. Be... So maybe. Uh, Good job. Wink, wink, hint, Maybe uh, Brad will drop in on a few calls and. Maybe yeah. we'll play some GTA together on Twitch. That's totally gonna so happen. So if you guys head over, you know. There she goes. Voicemail cut off. Hey Brad, it's Nova. Hey Just Nova. Want to say I love the Sensei Doug calls. Thanks. I was Nova. actually wanting to know if we could hear some calls from Sensei Doug's brother, Psychic Pete. He doesn't get his panties in a twist about people looking at him, but it really burns his buns when he thinks people are thinking about him. All right, thanks. <laughs> okay. Psychic Pete needs to make an appearance eventually. Brad, 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 Brad. Oh, I, Brad, I was 
I was meant to phone you up and I think someone challenged me to do an American accent. Yep. And I think I'm going to guess that you failed at it because the transcription for this voicemail says nothing but crack, 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 crack. And then the rest of it's just blank. So let's see how this goes. I'm not really the best at doing it, but I'll, I'll, I'll try and give it a go. We used to do a wee thing at school where I would say, I'm an American. I'm, I'm an American man. Bread, 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 bread. But it's it's not the best of accents. I'll need to I'll need to practice it more. I think it would fool me probably. And plus, you you have permission to make fun of my accent. I'm an American. No, no, I can't. I can't. I he can't really sing. do an American accent. I'll need to apologise to the to the person who challenged me to that. <laughs> And plus, my ears unblocked. Yes! Yeah, Bye. yeah, that old excuse again. Everybody be sure to vote in the comments on whether or not that was a passable American accent. I think I was fooled, and I actually knew he's not from America. But my vote doesn't count. You guys should vote in the comments on whether or not you were completely fooled by Nobby Guy's American accent there. Thank you for giving that a try. That's the end of today's show. Thank you, Serial Shitter, Miguel F., Jessical, St. Pepe, and Curaz for supporting the show today, for being the five sponsors. If you'd like to support the show and not get to be a single sponsor anymore like you used to, you can do that at patreon.com slash phone losers. Five dollars a month gets you a secret show most weeks and videos and all that stuff. And most importantly, if you support the show in the next week or two, it helps me send out more international packages. And that's kind of nice for the international people. Another thing that helps out with that is to go to phonelosers.com slash coins, which forwards you to the coin ordering page over on Bandcamp. Get your coins while you can, while they last. There's not many left. Hurry, everybody. I think I mentioned this on the last show, by the way, that I probably will order some more coins later this year once I recover from this Kickstarter thing because I basically have to. I, I'm totally fucked with the Kickstarter thing. I did not break even with this Kickstarter. I did it completely wrong. And I think if I buy a few more coins and sell a few more coins to you guys, then I might sort of break even. Even if I break even, I've got to pay taxes on all this income from the coins, so I'm probably still going to come out behind. But I might get closer to not being behind. So that may or may not happen. I don't know. I'll try to order more coins this year. I should be able to. I don't see why not. Maybe during the summer or something. It really sucks how stupidly I screwed everything up with the Kickstarter. Just everything. Not having enough coins for everyone. And then the whole postage thing. I'm an idiot. Don't forget to visit the show notes for this episode, snowplowshow.com, because there are important links in the show notes, such as the Facebook event page, for the New York City meetup that Carlito's doing this Saturday. And then, of course, the Cave Crew radio appearance thing that I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Tomorrow as in Thursday. So maybe today, if you're listening to this tomorrow, you got to show up for the live thing. Give me a bunch of shit in the chat rooms. I'm going to end today's show with the same song that we began with, which is the song that Cody No Name sent in. You know, Cody No Name, he's been impersonating people in the voicemails. He made a song called Son of a Cactus, and here it is. Phone kept ringing, so I picked up. It's Roy saying he's the one who dinged my truck. He was beaming radio waves and we ankle cups. Scratch a gas tank cap, left his CD in the trunk. I said, This seems fine, I don't even see a scratch. And suddenly he says, Well, you park like an ass. Now I'm feeling appalled, can't believe what he said. I'm so flustered by this call, my face is turning red. Then he says, He's just playing the only call to distract us. And the temerity of this son. Son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. So day at work. I'm feeling pretty bored. It's when I get a call and it's Steve Dave from corporate. Hey Steve Dave, what can I do? Yeah, we have some problems. I need a favor from you. Maybe I can pull some orders if you give me a phone number or two. Whoop. Whoop. Sure, here's some numbers. Anything else you need? Does a phone survey and someone kicks me in the knees? A few minutes later, I got people. Calling.
coming back to this scene. What the hell are you guys doing filling my engine with acid? Son of a cactus. He's a son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's a son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's a son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's a son of a cactus. Now this is a story that might sound weird. Who's watching Hallmark Channel drinking some near beer? That's what my buddy calls Frank from the association. But what Frank said next gave me hesitation. Said he killed my lawn and my trees got to go. Building a cell tower, selling China, all my info. I need to like the Facebook or I'll get evicted. And my internet use is gonna be restricted. Then he says, Tell your wife to shut the fuck up. Can't believe what you're saying to me. Frank, you are drunk? You drunk? He says, Yeah, I'm wasted, but I've always liked you. Put my garbage in your cans and tip them over just to spite you. Hate your uncle fence. It's covered with mold. And I can't stand you because you're so damn. But Frank, we're like the same age. This is so out of character. This call's so strange. You've thrown me for a loop. I think I'm feeling faint. Are you being serious with me, Frank? Nah, I'm just kidding. It's a prank. What? Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. <laughs> son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Where's your belt? Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Bob the balloon. Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Steve Dave. Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. Sensei Dog. Son of a cactus. He's the son of a cactus. You're a real strange dude.